the review class, and which I will put up here. So these are the main results that we'll be using to do um, the, all these analysis. So the main theoretical result, you have a tableau. Let me just put it like this. So that's your initial tableau in canonical form, and you pivot it, and then in the end, you have your final tableau. You put all star on it. Okay, that's the initial and that's the final. And, uh, and then you know, you know how to form the matrix B. Mm -hmm. That's the matrix of column A where the um, basic variable set is in the final form, right? So you know how to form this B and you know how to form this vector CB taken from there, okay? So with all that, we have the following. Once that's chosen, once which basic variable will be in the final form is decided, then I can actually compute all of these just in terms of the, the initial um, tableau, okay, in the following way. So A star will simply be the B inverse of A, and the B star will be the B inverse of B, and the C star would be C minus C B A star. Let me just write like that. And Z naught star equals C naught minus C B B star. Okay, so we proved this last time. Um, for this week, and probably even next week, we'll be just talking about how to use this to understand if I make a change anywhere in the initial tablet, how is it going to affect the final um, solution for this optimization problem, okay? So we're just we're gonna use that. So this is um, chapter, what is it, 5.2? 5 5.2, mm -hmm. There are a couple of homework problems assigned there. Mm -hmm. Anyone looked at it? I know someone did because I got questions from that. <laughs> Um, I can give some hint because those problems look like having nothing to do with this result. But if you think one layer deeper, you see the connection. So the questions are the following. They give you a LP problem and then they ask you, um, can you choose x1, x3 as the basic variable in the final form, right? So can that be used as the basic variable where you find the basic feasible solution? Will it be optimal? So once that's given, so you have to understand what this says. This says once the basic variables are, so this basic variable will determine these two guys. Once these, the set is chosen, then you can form the B, you can form the CB, then you would know all of these, the final form. Okay, so if you know the final form, you can look at it and you can check if it's optimal or not. Is that right? Does that make sense? Okay, so that's a big hint. So those homework problems will be attacked in this way. All right. Okay, so today we'll look into details of changing specific things. And uh, we'll first start with um, change the objective function. Okay, I'm going to make a change in the objective function um, in a specific way. Okay, so let's say I have an LP problem and I solved it and I find the optimal and let's denote um, the optimal solution x star be the let's say the, the original or old, the one without I change, the old LP problem. Okay, now I'm gonna make change, but I will make change in this specific way. So in the objective function, so where would I change? It will be this somewhere this C vector, is that right? That forms the objective function. So what I will change will be only one of the coefficient, okay? If I change multiple of them, that's a much harder problem, so. We'll say, if now I'm going to change one 
of the C J is changed or CI. Okay? I want to know how does how does the optimal value change? Or does it change or it doesn't change or how does it respond to that? Okay? Or it depends. Okay. Okay. Let's do, let's do some discussion or do some, try to answer this question first. So looking into what we have proved last time, let's see, if I change a C here, one of the C, what could I change in, in the final tableau? Well, it will not change A star and B star, is that right? The C doesn't go in there. It could change C star or Z not star. Right? And uh, um, but then the one thing important will be I still want the final form to be to give me the optimal solution. So when what is the condition that I still have this expression as the optimal solution? That will be all the coefficients C here must be non-negative, right? After the change, it's still non-negative. Then I know the x star, the optimal solution point, will not be changed, right? Then I know a lot of information. If that's changed, then I have to redo everything. Okay. So let's put this discussion down. So what, what we say is we have now, if I know that these are still all positive, so as long as um, all the C stars, Mm -hmm. What is the C star? So I have this expression, C minus CB A star is or bigger than zero, then, then this form is still optimal, and then I will, I will find the optimal value. This can be computed, so let me copy CB. Okay. So how does a change in the C affect these two values then? We see that it matters if the C becomes part of this CB or not. Is that right? What is CB? That's the coefficient in front of the, the basic variable that you choose at the end, right? If your C is not in front of a basic variable, then CB is unchanged. Do you see that? CB is unchanged. Then as long as C star becomes, remains positive, the opt optimal solution is unchanged, then the Z will not be changing because CB, only CB will affect the Z value. Do we see that? So let me write that down. What do I mean? I have two things I want to write. Um, only this vector, CB, will affect or will alter z star, the optimal value, OK? But the c will affect the c star, which is this constraint, as long as this is bigger than 0. So we make that observation. But other part of c will affect the c star, which we require to be bigger than zero for this to be unchanged. Okay. So that is kind of the guideline, and then we'll do some discussion here, okay, through an example. Uh, hopefully, everything shall be clear. Um, let me put it up. It's too low otherwise. Okay, let's just do an example to see how we can carry out this analysis. So let's see, I have a problem maximizing Z equals 11, x1, 4, x2, x3, 15, x4. And just some numbers. Mm -hmm. Subject to, I have the constraint, 3, x1, x2, 2, x3, 4x4. Okay. 
this example is just to repeat this idea that, that I just explained there. But now you see it in, in numbers and blah, blah. OK, so they're all positive. So we can um, rewrite it. We can add slack variable, x5, x6, put it into equal sign, and right-hand side is positive. So we see this is in canonical form. Is that right? And then we change this into minimization problem by changing the signs of all the coefficient. And this you can send into the LP assistant to carry out the calculation. Is that clear? So I'm going to write the tableau here, OK, because I, I, will, I will need to refer back to it in other examples. This will be the example we'll be using over and over by changing different things. Is that OK? So that is the example. So OK, let's say I, I set up a tableau. Mm -hmm. Um, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6. Okay, I'll leave some space. Okay, on purpose. Mm -hmm. Then I have 3, 1, 2, 4. I'm just copying the number 1, 0, 28, 8, 2, Negative one seven zero one fifty and uh, the basic variable is x five and x six. Okay, and then I put in the objective function. Now it's all changed the sign because this has to be a minimization problem. Negative one negative fifteen zero zero and zero. So we know that's the, the initial tableau. Is that right? That's how you set it in. So let me call this i to be the initial part of the tableau. So you, you, you click and you pivot and you take many, many steps as needed. And then you will reach the final form. Let me write the final form. And it turns out that x4, x2 are the basic variables. I'll have these numbers. So let's call this the final form in my tableau F. OK, so this is like the initial problem that I solved. Now I, I'm going inside and changing something in the objective function. Let's say, um, let's say this number 11, I'm going to change it. And I want to see how the answer responds to it. Is that OK? So this, this is the same example as in the book. So, OK, now let's say um, C1, which is negative 11, now is changed. OK, so how would the, how would the final solution respond to it? So we know um, A star, B star would not be changed. So if I carry out the same um, pivot step, this part remains the same, this part remains the same, this C will be changed and this Z, Z naught possibly will be changed, right, in some way. So how does it change? So let's make an observation. So C1 stays in front of X1, is that right? Is X1 a basic variable in the final tableau or not? Uh, no. I have x2 and x4. So let's say, so x1 is not a basic variable in the final form in f. Then what does it mean? Well, that means you change this c1, you will not change this vector 
CB here because it takes only the basic variable coefficient. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So CB not changed. And then if CB is not changed, then you know the optimal value depends only on CB is not changed. C0 star is not changed. Now, with the condition if, if the optimal point is not moved, right? Which we'll discuss now, if the following. Okay. So, what does this change really affect? Well, it will change the C star, wouldn't it? If you change this C1, mm -hmm, just this position here, as you pivot down through, and you see that the change in this number, how does it change the C value? Well, it will change only this C value, because you pivot, you add vertically. Is that clear? So only C1 star will be changed, right? So, so let's write. So this will change C1 star. Is that right? So let's write it out. Okay, in the final, in the final tableau, in that. Okay. So what do I have? C1 star. What would it be? It will be C1 minus CB times. So you know, this is uh, CB times A. If I look at only the first component, then I can do CB times A star the first column. That will give me the first component. Right? So let's plug in the some numbers because I, I know all of these. So this will be C1 minus. So what is the vector CB? Well, it's x4 and x2. Is that right? So you will go to the x4, negative 15, x2, negative 4. That's how you form that vector. Is that clear to everyone, this in information? So we have negative 15 and negative Four, that's the CB, and a star 1, that will be the first column in the final tableau, that will give me negative 2, and 11. We can do this product, it will be a number, is that right? It will be 30 minus 44, negative 14, right? So a negative negative becomes positive, so C1 plus 14. That's what you will have. Is that okay? Is it clear where I get all these from? That's the CB. That's the A star column number one. Is it okay? All right. So what do we need? We need this one, this number to be non-negative, right? So need, need the following. C1 star must be bigger than 0, then the, the, the x star is unchanged. Then I know a lot of information. So this means c1 has to be bigger than negative 14. OK? So what does it mean? Going back to the change we're proposing to do in the original problem, so that means this coefficient here, if I change it, if I add number onto it less than equal 3, then this change will not change the optimal solution. Right? Does that make sense? Is that what it says? OK, let me, let me write. Um, so this, I have the following. If this 11, the change is changed meaning added on top by adding something that's less than 3. Oh, sorry. OK, this is not good English. Mm -hmm. Meaning this number in the end is less than 14, then I will know x star is unchanged. And then I will know c the optimal value is also unchanged. OK. 
Okay, so that's part one. And then part two, if now x is changed to, to be strictly bigger than 14, then that's bad news. That means uh, in the final tableau, this number here will be negative. Then your solution is no longer optimal, and you have to pivot further. Is that right? Does that make sense? That's what it says. Okay. Then more pivot steps. Maybe one, maybe multiple, I don't know. They are needed. You will need to work more. I cannot conclude here. Okay? So is it clear this analysis? That's the conclusion you can make so far. Otherwise, I mean, and then you have to pivot further because, but then we, we don't want to do it because, okay, we just want to have this information. How much can I change? The optimal solution remains the same, right? So you see, a similar argument can be applied if I want to change the other one, let's say C3. If I change this number here, I will apply a similar argument, right? Because that is not in front of a basic uh, variable. Is that clear? So I'll just write out same analysis for changes in C3, that number one. If you change it, OK, you can. Probably it's in the homework. I, I don't know if I put it in there. OK, okay. so this is what you do if um, the variable is not a basic variable. Now, let's see if it is a basic variable. Let's say if, um, let's say now if I change, um, let's pick either x4, x2. Um, let's say if I change the c4. x4 is a basic variable, right? If I make a change there, what would it be? Let's say. If I change C4 into the following. So originally, I have 15. I'm going to add some amount on top. And I want to see how much this amount I can add. It could be positive. It could be negative. What are the uh, allowed value for this lambda so that I keep the same optimal solution? OK? OK, so uh, if I change this, and then I see CB is changed because now it's a, x4 is a basic variable. Okay, so what will be my CB? Well, CB will equal, I will take C4 and C2, so it will be 15 and 4, but now I have. Um, a lambda added on top of it. So 15, negative 15 minus lambda, and negative 4. That becomes the CB. It's changed by that amount. Is that right? OK. And then you know um, C star will be changed, and I have to recompute. So C star equals that. CB enters, so everywhere will be changed. All the elements in C star will be changed. OK? C star is a vector. OK, so let's compute. So. How will the C star be in this change? Let's write out. So that equals C minus CB A star. Isn't that right? So let's put these vectors. So C, it's a long vector, fat one, negative 11, <coughs> negative 4, negative 1, negative 15 minus lambda, 0, 0. That's the C, right? It's just this guy here. I copied, OK? Minus CB, which I have there. CB, um, let me write the CB, um, negative 15 minus lambda, negative 4 times the A star. Where do you find A star? It's this guy here, right? It's in the final tableau. You have all of it. You can compute this. So. I'm going to do it in the following way. I'm going to break up this vector into two. 
One contains the change. One, bless you, one is the old one. You're the most blessed person in this class. <laughs> Triple blessing, sorry. Negative 11, negative 4, negative 1, negative 15, 0, 0. So I break this vector into two. One is without lambda, and then I write the second one out to be with the change. So the change is only happening on on this guy here, which is negative lambda. The rest is unchanged, right? I can break into two vectors. And I do the same thing um, to this minus. So this will equal um, negative 15, negative 4, multiply a star. Mm -hmm. And then, so I break this vector into two. One is the old one. And then the second is the new one. The new one will be negative lambda, 0. So let me get rid of the, lambda, the negative sign. I have lambda, 0, times a star. I'll write it like that. So you see, um, this is the part that has um, that when you don't make any changes, keeping the old one. Is that right? So do you think I need to carry out this computation, or I actually have it somewhere? What would that be? Wouldn't, wouldn't that be the, the old C in the final tableau? It would just be this. Is that right? So I'll say this part is in the tableau F, in the final form already, the C. And this is a, the thing that I added on top, right? So I need to do this computation. This vector multiplied by A star. So A star is here. If I multiply on the left by this vector, what happens to each? So I will have lambda multiplied by the, the first element in the column plus 0 multiplied by the second. So in the end, what you have will be the first row of a star and multiply this by lambda. Is that clear? And then with this vector, so you, you, you visually take this vector, multiply everyone by lambda. And then on top of that one, you add this vector, meaning position number four, you're going to subtract a lambda, nothing else. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. I'm going to write it up here. So this gives me the following. All right, so if I multiply, um, OK, let, let me copy this one first. I have the first one, 3, 0, 2, 0, 2. 1, that will be this one, OK? Plus, oh, I should probably do here, plus. I multiply all this by lambda, and then I will subtract a lambda from the 4, which will make it lambda minus lambda. That's 0. Is that right? All the others will be with the lambda. So negative 2, lambda, 0, 5, lambda. OK, let me write lambda minus lambda, and 2 lambda, negative lambda. OK? And then I add up these two vectors, right, in each position. So I get the following. 3 minus 2 lambda, 0. 2 plus 5 lambda, 0. 2 plus 2 lambda, 1 minus lambda. I get this vector. This would be the, the C, this row here, if I change this number into 11 plus lambda. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. So I want all of these to be bigger than or equal to 0, right? So what do I need? I need um, c star, this expression here, to be bigger than 0, element-wise. OK, that means I get these are 0. They're OK. All that expression here with the lambda involved, they must be bigger than 0. So I have. 3 minus 2 lambda bigger than 0, 2 plus 5 lambda bigger than 0, 2 plus 2 lambda bigger than 0, 1 minus lambda bigger than 0. And all of them must be satisfied, OK? All of them. So let's solve this. So each one will give me some constraint. This I move to the left. I'll have lambda less than 1.5. 
this move over, I have lambda bigger than negative 0.4. This is lambda bigger than negative 1. This is lambda less than 1. Are we OK? So what is the, the intersection of all these constraints? Less than, less than that, you take the small one, right? Bigger than this, bigger than this, you take the big one. That's the interval it has to lie. So you have negative 0.4, less than lambda, less than 1. So what does it say? It says, if the change you add on top lies on this interval, not too big, not too small, mm -hmm, then x star will not be changed, right? Then you know a lot of how, about how the final solution will be. So let's write the conclusion. So as long as lambda lies between that, mm -hmm. and then we have x star, the optimal point is unchanged. You can get it from here. So you know it's 0, 4, 0, 6. That remains the optimal solution. And then you can form the, the final z, z value here. Well, what would that be? Well, if you know the optimal solution, you just multiply this with the, with the coefficient. So you will have 4 times c2, which is here. OK, so I have 4 times 4 plus um, 6 times c4 is 11 plus lambda. Is that right? Or is it 15? OK, it's 15. That's how I changed it, right? So open this up and add up. The constant term, I will get 106 plus 6 lambda. So that's how the optimal value will respond to the lambda. If you change one unit of lambda, the rate of change in the final optimal value is 6 unit per unit, even though the lambda has to lie between negative 0.4 and 1 for this to be true. Is that OK? Question? Yeah. It's all these must be satisfied. I have less than one, which is stronger than that. Is that right? You choose the smaller between these two to be your upper bound. You choose the bigger one between these two to be your lower bound. Right? It will depend on the problem eventually what you get. But that's inequality you have to solve. Yeah. Yeah. Is that clear? So this is the type of analysis I expect you to be able to do. Find the allowed region. And once lambda is in that region, give me an analysis of how the change of lambda affects the final optimal value. It's OK? If it's outside, you have to repivot. This doesn't give you anything. That means you have something negative here. You haven't reached the optimal. You have to do more steps. OK? All right, so um, I would write a, if I now, let's say if I change the C2, because x2 is also a basic variable, you do a very similar, a similar analysis for changes in C2. OK, and then I think that, that for sure, I remember that is in the homework problem. So you will find it there. So you perform this in a totally similar way. So is the procedure clear through this example? Mm -hmm. Should I do a summary of what to do? I did it in the other class, but then, then I felt this impression that probably the example was clearer than the summary. But let's try. <laughs> OK, let's do a summary. So it matters if the coefficient is in front of a basic variable or not, right? That's the key step. So you have two cases. 
summary. Mm -hmm. OK, so let's say if only I change only one, um, ci is changed to ci plus lambda. That's the only change I make, not to a multiple of them. OK, then it matters. First, you have to check if xi, let's say the first situation, is not a basic variable. OK, now be careful. It's the basic variable in the final form of the tableau. OK, that's where you check. Right, not the uh, original one. OK, if that is the case, then what did we need to do? We know as long as C star remains positive, I will not change the optimal value. Is that right? So we need to we'll write this down. Z not star remains as long as as C, and I know I only need to change, check one of the C's, the corresponding C at the end. Only need to check that. OK? Right. And then I need to find the allowed range of change. by C i star. This equals C i minus C b a. That's in the final tableau. Take out the i-th column and make this computation. You get one number, and you require that to be bigger than 0. Okay, So it will be just one number. So this will give you a one-sided inequality, less than something or bigger than something, and that's it. The other direction, you can go as much as you want. But one direction will be restricted. OK? So this is one constraint in the end. OK? That's the, so otherwise, the other situation, if xi is a basic variable in the final form f, mm -hmm. Then you know it changes quite a bit of the things. You have to compute all of these. So first, um, I know this will be changed. OK? We, we, we take that, and then I'll specify how much. And then I know that I actually will need to find out, as we did here, the allowed range of change, right? Find the allowed, the same here range of change for, for this lambda by this constraint here. So C star equals C minus C B A star shall be bigger than 0, as we did. Okay. So now be careful here. This is a vector. This becomes a vector. In the end, every element in this vector must be bigger than or equal to 0. You have a bunch of constraints. You need to find the intersection. Is that right? OK, as we did. So pay attention. This is a vector, OK? You have many constraints from that. All right? OK? And then once you have that, and then you know how the optimal value z is being changed. We claim z will be changed. Now I can quantify the z, so will be z naught. Mm -hmm. uh, no, z will be changed. So z not change will be. So the quickest way to find, well, you can use this expression, but if I know the x star is unchanged and I know the new c star, I can just do this product that will just give me it. So c star dot x star. That will be this value, right? As we did here. We basically use the c star multiplied by the x star to get it. That's the quickest one. Okay. 
So you think the summary helps or confuses? <laughs> it's useful to have it there? Right. So um, one last thing. So OK, so we, we went through one example, and we did the summary. Um, in the textbook, there are other examples. So if this is still not completely clear to you, I um, ask you to read other examples, basically talking about the same thing all right, in the book. Okay, You read that, so you get another example. It might help you clear the, the thoughts. All right? Okay, so go ahead and do that. Right. Is it okay? We're going to move to the next chapter. Now we're going to make, oh, wait a second. I should not have changed that. Okay. Uh -huh. um, let, me, let me keep this here. Z equal 11 x1. Plus. Okay, let me leave it here and let me start here. Say, now what are we going to do? But actually, I will not need it in the end. Okay. So, now we're going to talk about um, the change that will happen if I. Um, decided to add a new variable, OK? So you had an optimal prob optimization problem. You solved it. And then later on, you realize there is another, another quantity that matters that should enter into my constraint, which I forgot, or whatever, or a new situation arises. And then it has to go into the constraint. So I have a new variable. It will go into the constraint. It will go into the objective function. How does it affect? Is that clear what we do? OK. OK, let's say um, we're going to add a new variable, x um, n plus 1, into the system. OK? So we'll have the following problem, say, minimizing z equals c dot x. That's the old part. And I add a new one, cm plus 1, xm plus 1, mm -hmm. subject to. And then in the A matrix, I will have to add one more column to, to be for the xm plus 1. Is that right? So I have the A matrix here, and I have an additional column, A, the m plus 1 column here. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, that's the old x vector, and I need to add in one more variable. Okay? And then the right hand side is unchanged. And everything is positive, so this is all not changed. Okay, so how will the solution for this problem be? Um, or how can how the how can the solution here be obtained from the old one through some relation between them. OK? How does it affect? OK. So let's make some observation before we do that. In the end, we'll take an example, and hopefully we'll be, everything will be clear. We see if I set x m plus 1 to be 0, mm -hmm. and then I look at the solution that is the x, the optimal solution for the old one with the, a new 0 added here. Then you see this is a, this is a basic solution. Is that right? Because it, it's all 0 at the non-basic variables. And uh, it will be feasible as well, right? So this will be a basic feasible solution. So OK, so that's good news. But then the main question is the following. It's basic feasible solution, but is it optimal? Right? If it's optimal, I'm done. It, not, nothing changes. If it's not, then I have to work about it. OK, so the question is, is it 
up to low. Okay. Well, okay, so the answer is, well, it depends. Of course it depends. So we need to do analysis to figure this out. So let's say um, I have, let's see, we have this tableau relation. So the initial tableau now is extended with one more column in the A. That's my B. And then I have a C, and I have one more C and plus one here. And this is Z, zero. And let's say I perform the same pivoting step as when I didn't have that, and then I reached a final tableau. So A is changed into a star, and uh, the last column is changed correspondingly. And B is B star, that's the same. And C star is the same. And then Cn plus 1 is changed correspondingly because you pivot. And then possibly the Z will be changed as well. Let's say the same pivot, I generate this final tableau. OK, then what can we say? So, OK, so let me reformulate my question. So um, what will tell me that this feasible solution here actually will be optimal? How would I know? Exactly. Do we all see that? If in, I already know all the C stars are be bigger than equal zero, right? If this one happened to be bigger than equal zero, then that's optimal. Is it clear? Right. So let me put this down. If C m plus one star. is bigger than zero. Mm -hmm. then x star 0 here is optimal. OK, so um, how do we compute this c n star? So c n plus 1 star, how is it computed? Well, we have, we have this relation, right? You look at n plus 1, you change into n plus 1, take the n plus 1 column. Is that right? So that is computed as c m plus 1 minus c b mm -hmm. and a star at m plus 1. OK, let, let me write out. Um, this actually is computed further as b inverse times b column a m plus 1. So this guy will eventually be a star m plus 1 column. That's the relation. OK, so that is the, the good situation. But then if I have the other one, if this number here happened to be less than 0, then what can I say? Well, then I know that this x star 0, that is not the optimal point, right? And this z value here is not optimal either. I will have to pivot further to find out. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So, more pivot needed. Yeah. Is that clear? That is just basically the kind of the algorithm, the guideline, what you have to do. So now we're going to take an example. All right. So um, I'm going to take an example. Um, may I just mess up with the previous example here? So. In this example that we had earlier, mm -hmm, this old example here, I am going to add an x7. Is that OK? I add a new variable into it. OK. So I add it in this way. So, um, so I just need to change the final two things here. So there's x5, x6. You change it into standard form. So I will add 12 x7. OK, so this is x5, x6. OK, and then I add plus 3 x7. And then I add a 
5 x 7 equals 28 equals 50. So these are the new things that I'm adding into the system. Is that OK? And I want to see how, how, how the final answer, the optimal value, changes, how I can figure this out. OK, okay so um, if I put these numbers in my tableau, mm -hmm, um, then I will have to put, OK, so now I have a, have a new one, add x7 here. So this is the new one. So let me kind of separate it from the rest. I have to fill in one more column, x7. Mm -hmm. So um, this gives me, what did I put, 3, 5, 3, 5, and uh, 12. So negative 12, right? So I have one more column in there. So what will I have here? In particular, what will I have here? Will it be positive or negative? Question? Yeah. Uh, why would you go from um, negative negative 28 to 28? Because I add the slack variable here. And then I have to go all the way to x7. Right? In the final, because that will make this canonical. These are the basic variables. Yeah. Okay. OK, so let's see what we can fill in in the final tableau just by following these relations that we have. So, so what do we have now? So we can figure out what is the B. So B will be column 4 and column 2. So it will be this column and this column. If I write it up, I will have 4, 7, 1, 2. And I know I need the B inverse. It's, it's multiplied everywhere, the B inverse. Are we OK find the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix? Can we know how to do it? If not, Google it. OK, make sure you can do that. OK? So, um, so I got 2, 4, negative 1, negative 7. Mm -hmm. That's a B inverse. And what's the, the this vector? CB would be um, what's under x4 and x2 in the original tableau, so negative 15 and uh, negative 4. That's the CB. OK, I, I would need to compute the A star n plus 1. What would that be? Well, that would be just B inverse multiplied by A at n plus 1, right? So 2, negative 7, negative 1, 4 times the new column that I added over there, the new one that's 3, 5, OK? You do this multiplication, you get um, 1, negative 1. It's a simple number. And then I can compute the C7 um, star, right? That number. Actually, this is the crucial number. If it's bigger than 0 or less than 0, that changes the whole picture, right? That's important to figure this out. So this will equal to the old C7 minus the CB multiplied by the A um, star. OK, why did I write n plus 1? It's number 7, right? Well, we, can we just do 7? It's a, n is 6 here. It's just the seventh column. OK, the seventh column. So C7 in the old one is negative 12 minus CB I already have, negative 15, negative 4. And uh, this I just computed is 1, negative 1. So you have negative 12 minus 15, 4 to gives you negative 11. That gives you negative 1. It's OK? It's just adding these numbers up. Is it clear where all these numbers come from, where I extract my information to, to form? to do this computation. Mm -hmm. OK, so less than 0. So what does it say? Can I keep the old optimal feasible solution? No, it's not good anymore, right? So this means um, 
in this old final form, I would have negative 1 here. Um, I will have 1 here, negative 1 here. This is negative. This value is not optimal. I will have to pivot further. Is that right? So um, this x star 0 is not optimal anymore. So I need to do more pivot steps. OK, so let's, let's see. How can we pivot here? If you are, you can do this by hand. These are all so small numbers, isn't it? So that's the column I will choose, right? Where would I pivot? This or this? Which one? The positive number. Is that right? That's where you pivot. And, and then you carry out the pivot process. And so x7 will be the basic variable, replacing x4. x2 is unchanged. If you do that pivot step, which I did, we'll get the following. I will have, this is unchanged, x2, 0. 5, 1, 2, negative 1, 1, 6. And this is changed. I get 9, 1, negative 13, 1. Just add them up. Negative 5, 3, 0, and 10. And then the final, the objective function, 0, 1, 7, 1, 4, 0, 0. OK. And, uh, Add this up, I get 1, 1, 2. So one pivot step, we found out that is enough because now all these are non-negative. So this will be the optimal value. Then you're done. Is that OK? OK, so pivoting work and then shows you that the optimal value now is uh, 1, 1, 2. OK, so I want to draw your attention to one fact here. Now this is the, this is the really the final tableau, is that right? And you see that in the final tableau, you have x7 as the basic variable. And that is the new constraint, the variable that you added. So here comes the question. Is there a faster way, an obvious way maybe, for me to understand if x7 will become a basic variable or not? OK? So I have a question. So how to? determine whether x7 will enter the, the basic variable set. OK? I mean, in the final solution, in the, at the optimal basic feasible solution. Well, of course, you can carry out this procedure. And I, and I think this is a bit heavy. I would like to see an alternative way maybe to clearly see this. Mm -hmm. Any suggestions? What do you think I will pull out? There is something we haven't used <laughs> that is closely related to this problem is the, the dual. Is that right? Let's take a look at how does this change change the dual. So consider the dual. Now, adding a new variable in the original problem, how does it change the dual? You get an extra constraint. Do we all see that? So the dual, let's say, have variable y1, y2 attached to each of it. 
you will have a new constraint. So, so adding, let's just stick to this problem. So adding xx leads to a new constraint in the dual. Okay, so what is this constraint? So let's write it out. So I will have 3 y1 plus 5 y2. Is that right? So um, the original problem is a um, minimization problem because uh, my, my constraints have this uh, um, sign. What was the original problem? Well, you can write out its dual, and you will, f you will have this constraint. So let me write bigger than um, 12. So you, the original problem is maximization. So the dual will be minimizing, and it will be bigger than equal. Right? You can, you can double check. So I have this constraint here. And then I have the following question. So what will be the solution to the dual of the original one, of the original problem, the problem without x7. So what will be this y star? It's on the board. Anyone see it? The original problem, I, without this, I solved up to here. I am done. Where do I extract the solution for the dual? Anybody? <laughs> the solution to the dual will be the coefficient in front of the slack. Is that right? Which will be these two. Is that clear? Two, one. Is that right? That's where you find the solution for the dual. Okay, okay so here is the, is the question. So is y star feasible with the new constraint? Or does it satisfy the new constraint? If it satisfies the new constraint, then this will remain optimal because the objective function is not, not changed by that, right? And if it's, OK, let's answer. So, um, e, so this, so if yes, then y star is still optimal. Mm -hmm. And if no, then, well, then we go back to the original question that we're going to answer. Then you know that the new variable you added then this is not optimal anymore, then x7 will enter the basic variable. It will become a basic variable in the final form. So that's a way for you to check. So let's check. In this problem, um, what do we have here? Let me just do it over here. That's a bit messy. So let's check. So if I put in. 2 and 1 in my constraint. So let's check. I have 3 times 2 plus 5 times 1, which is 5, gives me 11. I want it to be bigger than 12. Does it hold? Nope. So I'm in the second situation. So I know x7 will have to enter the basic variable. Isn't this quicker than going through the, the thing we did? Mm -hmm. All right. And I also want to catch you, you to catch this attention, this just connection. So let's compute the, the slack here by meaning um, let's compute how much is the constraint being violated. Because this is not really slack. It's the other way, right? So I have 11 and 12. How much is it violated? by the amount is negative 1. Is that right? Yeah. Do I see this number somewhere <laughs> on the board? Where did we compute? 
It's not coincident that it equals that. It always will do. All right? So this will give you exactly, this will equal to the C7 star if you work out that calculation. You will have that. Okay, so this number, let me point out, will be this number here in the tableau. Right. So you see more connections between the, the dual and its original problem. Okay. Right. Any questions? You okay? Right. All right. So and last thing I want to say, no matter how you feel about the exam, how you feel about this course, go and vote. <laughs> go and vote. Don't miss that. Once every four years. You don't want to miss it. All right.